everybody. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. This summer was challenging, but this fall is just wondrous. I am loving it. So is Steve, and so are the birds and the insects. It's about time, that's what I got to say. So the wonder I am marveling at this week is something that you can see right here, right now, and it's all under the trees. Can you guess? A lot of you've gotten really good at guessing when I say that. You know what I'm going to talk about. I think I'm fairly predictable. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, that's me. All right. If you thought leaves, you got it right. I am so grateful for these amazing materials that drop from these trees. I know you all probably have leaves where you are, and I know at some points in all our lives we go, oh my goodness, there's a lot of leaves. What do I do with all of them? Especially when they're falling in your yard or your path. And you can see here that we have a path and there's not any leaves on the path. And there's not many leaves out in our yard. And I'll show you over here on our table area, in our table area, we also don't have any leaves there. And I got my binoculars there because I'm taking a tour after this. There's some cool stuff happening. Purple finches are here right now. We heard their song first and then we went out and we found them in the junipers. Ah, very exciting. Back to the leaves. So it's really simple what we've done here so that the leaves can do their work in the world, which is to replenish the soil, shelter so many different insects and different mammals, shelter the plants in the winter, and again, let me say it just again, replenish the soil because the soil is the foundation for everything and soil has been so beat up in so many areas and I think it'll take my whole lifetime of leaves plus maybe 25 million more and then the soil will say, oh, I feel satiated. I don't know. But what do we do here? Well, we've made it easier on ourselves. So some of you will remember because you've been following our channel for a long time, which I'm so excited about because that means you're totally into restoration, which makes our hearts so happy because there is hope for the future. So by making it easier on ourselves, what does that mean? Well, we enlarged the area under these trees to be entire beds, if you want to call it that. So really it's just like a woodland understory here since there are trees. And when we first moved here, there were these big piles of trash. So we cleaned up all the trash and then we put a tidy little edging around the west side of the trees, which is the opposite side of the trees that we're looking at. But then the leaves would still fall way out of the bounds of that edging. And then that meant we needed to rake more. So look right here. You can see all the infrastructure parts of the heating of our house. I just keep a rake out back and a simple rake. It's so easy and then it's just accessible. If I'm putting tools away constantly that I use all the time, I'm much less likely to do the task. So I might not be approved by Helen and Scott Nearing, but it works by me. The rake has lasted for so many years. I would say probably the tree boundary was, or the where we had our edging was about right in here. And the branches of the tree extend far past that. So look at this. You can see that now the edge of the bed is way out here and it just keeps expanding on its own which is pretty awesome because that means plants are growing. They're responding to the conditions that are being created. 
and they always make their best conditions way better than me and we still have this area where there sometimes leaves fall out here this is west again of these trees and when we do our last mow of the season steve will usually just blow them back into the bed we don't really mulch many leaves here at all because there's so many cool cocoons i just found a luna moth cocoon the other day out front in the leaves so it had fallen off one of those trees out front and that was so exciting because it just works the way mother nature operates is just ingenious in this area it seems kind of thick right now and everybody asks me how does that work out and it really just works so so fine i mean really just so fine these are sugar maples the leaves break down pretty fast i mean almost too fast we wish that we had more leaves right in the middle is where we have golden seal and those leaves decay pretty quickly but from what I've read, they're also really high in calcium, maple leaves. And so they're very beneficial to the soil. I'm sure that's true for many leaves. I'm not a leaf expert though. It's just cool when you read things and you go, man, I'm starting to see another piece of this puzzle. And it's brilliant. That is gooseberry. Also really loving this edge here. I'm hoping the wind isn't too crazy for the audio. I want to show you another area and so we're gonna go there next because over here heading to the north side of the house depending on the winds of the season the leaves will either come down in the perfect area which is where we want to leave the leaves anyways or they end up here north of the house on the grass and this is part of the grass that we have maintained it's visible from the road that's not our gate that's our neighbors and so it looks like we're doing stuff here i keep emphasizing that we are really quite wild which suits us but it also is obvious that someone lives here we're not just letting everything decay and fall apart and be junky and it's funny how nature never looks junky if they're on their own. It could be a whole wild field and look beautiful, but if you have a house and then all these human bits and it starts to decay, then everything just looks decayed. Anyways, back to the leaves. This year, they all landed out here in the grass. And we can't have them laying there all winter because it'll kill the grass. And we want to keep the grass right here. So we laid a tarp down. Steve did a couple loads, I did a couple, and laid it there, and then just raked all those leaves onto the tarp in batches. I wanna clarify that, in batches, so that they were still movable by us. I mean, Steve and I aren't superhuman. We have our own body challenges, and so we have to keep doing things that work for our bodies but we also want to have movement in our life because that's part of what we get to do when we have bodies that are able we get to move and we want to move so we always look at these activities outside as something that's good for our bodies and good for the earth and so we're walking over here towards the vernal pool, which you probably won't be able to hear it, but there's a whole bunch of robins in the trees above me, and they have been, oh yeah. Okay, I just kicked the bird out, a yellow rumped. This is the vernal pool getting lower, of course, at this time of year, and there's all these sticks going into the water. And so every time Steve and I walk by here, there are birds in here drinking so neat to see so many different lives using this pool we did a little bit of thinning just now a few days ago and added to our brush pile 
we had some silky dogwoods really overhanging the path right here to where we couldn't even get through anymore and the shading turned this path to mud and that really contributes to some challenges it's easier to compact because Steve and I walk it all the time and then it, you can really get slip sliding away at a certain time of year grass on paths can be quite helpful all right back to the leaves we brought probably three, four, or five loads of leaves on the tarp over several days into this area. If you watched last week's video, then you'll remember this is where we put a whole bunch of black cohosh seeds intermixed with other woodland herbs. And we put the leaves right on top because the leaves in this area had already dropped and it just wasn't enough so we planted the seeds and the soil was all exposed and those seeds want to have some covering material to help feed the soil and then also protect the seeds so we hauled them over here and look here they remain throughout winter if we get crazy crazy winds and as the vegetation dies back even more a lot of leaves move around so we're always welcoming downed sticks and branches to help hold all those leaves in place and that my friends is the wonder of leaves i can't get over how well this cycle works i've seen it a million times over when I'm hiking in the woods, but when you're doing the restoration work, you see it hands on. I mean, your hands are dirty, your body has been working hard, you're out here, you're feeling the wind, you're listening to the birds, and then you see the soil and you know that the leaves need to be down there to help all of these plants and to help give shelter for all the other lives that depend on here, the Eastern deciduous forest. So wherever you live might be very different from what we have here. So I know all of you are doing and mimicking what mother nature is doing in your part of the world. And that is just so cool to know. Thank you again for everything you are doing. We just feel so privileged to be doing this together.